In reviewing the book of Revelation, a number of questions come up. Questions related to the extent to which it is an actual prophecy. Questions about who actually wrote the book of Revelation. And finally, what is the actual purpose of the book of Revelation? There are some questions about authenticity along with the deeper meaning of the book of Revelation. What is its actual purpose? When looking at the KJV or King James Version of the Bible 1611, a number of oddities jump out when reviewing the book of Revelation. The first oddity is the name of the person who is supposed to be the author of the book of Revelation. This entity is identified as St. John the Divine. It's unclear exactly who St. John the Divine happened to be, even though individuals attribute this whole thing to the entity known as John the Apostle. There are a number of reasons for questioning the authorship of this book of Revelation of St. John the Divine. First of all, there are inconsistencies with respect to the book of Revelation and other parts of the New Testament, specifically the Gospels. The book of Revelation is highly cryptic and it also looks like uh, there are plagiarism elements in the book of Revelation because some of the language in the book of Revelation looks like the language that you find from the prophets in the Old Testament of the Bible. And so the book of Revelation does not neatly fit at the end of the New Testament. It appears out of place in terms of the narrative of the New Testament. There also appears to be some God complex dynamics operating with respect to this entity understood as St. John the Divine. And along with that, there are inconsistencies between the entity noted as Jesus in the book of Revelation and the entity noted as Jesus in the rest of the New Testament. So these entities don't really hang together now. Some people will offer that Jesus came in like a lamb and then he leaves in Revelation like a lion and that that's the explanation for these discrepancies. But we are talking about what appears to be completely different entities with respect to the Jesus of the New Testament and then the Jesus that is supposed to be presented in the book of Revelation. In addition to the book of Revelation having elements that resemble the Old Testament, the book of Revelation also resembles what is known as the book of Enoch. And so there are some similarities with respect to the dynamics in the book of Enoch and the book of Revelation. But many people don't read the book of Revelation and they also do not read the book of Enoch. And so they may not know that these similarities actually exist, but they are there. So if you do a, a parallel reading of the book of Enoch, and the book of Revelation, you will start to see these patterns emerge with respect to these similarities. Now, depending on how you look at it, it might be thought that the book of Revelation is replicated in the book of Enoch. Um, however, the similarities are there, however they came to be. Another oddity about the book of Revelation is the audience, the intended audience for this book. Apparently, the intended audience uh, consists of these seven churches in Asia. And so in terms of the testimony, in terms of the narrative, in terms of the vision, it's all about these seven churches in Asia. However, when considering the book of Revelation, there is this offering that it is a message to everyone, but that's not completely clear in the book. Again, there are several inconsistencies, and this is another one of those oddities. And so when individuals are talking about the book of Revelation, they don't really focus on the fact that this book is apparently written for, written 
to a particular collective of people. But again, because it's sort of jumping all over the place, it's very difficult to keep track of exactly what is going on in the book of Revelation. It's also important to keep in mind that these seven churches of Asia are located in places that would be understood as present-day Turkey. Hopefully some of you who identify as biblical scholars or identify as descendants of Jacob or as Christians can provide some insight into some of these questions. So perhaps you've done some studying and you have some answers. Um, as with the rest of the KJV 1611, there are illustrations in here, and you can see one of the illustrations off to the left-hand side. Now, again, this is where things are not completely clear. Initially, the entire book is understood as the revelation of St. John the Divine. However, when looking at the introduction here, it indicates that the revelation is of Jesus Christ. Um, and so it's not clear whether we are talking about uh, the revelation of John the Divine or whether we are talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ. And when you look at what you know revelation means, it means the uncovering of something. And so is it the uncovering of Jesus Christ that is being offered here or is it the uncovering of something related to John the Divine? At any rate, it goes on to indicate which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel. The angel is not identified here unto his servant John. And so this is very convoluted, but we are going to look at it. In plain writing so that you can see it more clearly to get a better understanding of exactly what is being said here but right here there is some confusion about exactly who is receiving the revelation or what the revelation is exactly about because this idea of the revelation of and then a person would suggest the uncovering of the person um, but that's not completely clear here. Even though we are going to continue on with two and three here, we are going to look at what is stated in one through three in plain language in the KJV, but not the 1611. So you will be able to see clearly exactly what is stated. We will all be able to see clearly um, exactly what is being stated um, with letters that we can actually see and understand here. And so it goes on to indicate who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Now for the more reader friendly version of Revelation 1.1. We have the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. And so now we have a turn of events here. So we are not talking about the revelation of St. John the Divine. We are now talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ which apparently, according to this, came from God the Father, and it was given to Jesus, or revealed about Jesus, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, that are going to be coming to pass fairly quickly. And then Jesus, according to this, uh, sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Um, again, this is extremely complicated in terms of exactly what is going on here and why this revelation is going through so many entities in order to get to John. And so it's coming from God the Father to Jesus, apparently to an angel, 
and then to John. And this also complicates the understanding of Revelation because in some instances it appears that an angel is talking. In some instances it appears that the entity known as Jesus is talking. And then in some instances it appears that John is talking. Um, but it's not always clear who exactly is talking. Of course, the red letters suggest when the entity known as Jesus is supposed to be talking. But again, it's very convoluted and very cryptic, making it very difficult to understand exactly what is going on with this narrative. Continuing on with Revelation 1-2, it indicates who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. And so this again is suggesting that John is the one who is bearing record of all of these things. However, inside of the book of Revelation, uh, there is this angel also operating. And there is also this suggestion by the red lettering that Jesus is actually talking in the book of Revelation. So some of this is very confusing when you look at it in totality. It goes on to indicate at number three, blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And so again, John is clearly identifying what is going on here as a prophecy, not simply a vision, um, but an actual prophetic word. It's unclear about John the Apostle also being a prophet. Um, but of course, when individuals are indicating that John the Apostle is the person who wrote this, there is now the suggestion that John the Apostle is an actual prophet uh, versus simply an apostle. Um, it goes on to indicate and keep those things which are written therein. And so the reader and the hearer uh, is they are both being instructed to keep those things which are written therein. So the things that are written in the prophecy, keep them, whatever that means. Uh, then it goes on to indicate for the time is at hand. Now this is, you know, over 2000 years ago. And so the time is at hand apparently has a, a slightly different meaning um, because many people believe that we are currently in the book of Revelation. And based upon some of the things in the book of Revelation, uh, one could see where individuals might actually make that sort of connection. But there is still the question about the veracity of the book of Revelation. There are questions about the authenticity of the book of Revelation. And so there are a number of questions about the book of Revelation uh, that should be addressed. Now, some people are uncomfortable with addressing these things. However, um, these questions are out there. And again, this book that is sitting at the end of the New Testament doesn't fit at the end of the New Testament. It most definitely looks like um, it is something that was lifted out of the Old Testament. And again, uh, stylistically, it looks like uh, someone else perhaps wrote what's going on in the book of Revelation based upon what's uh, in the Old Testament. And there's also stylistically a relationship between the book of Revelation and one of the writers in the New Testament because one of the writers in the New Testament not the gospel uh, but one of the writers in the New Testament um, has a style of writing that's very interesting very complex um, and so this book of Revelation sort of feels like some of the writings in the New Testament that are also inconsistent with the Gospels. And so that's some food for thought. And those are some questions about the book of Revelation. And again, those of you who are identifying as descendants of Jacob, those of you who are identifying as Christians, those of you who are identifying as biblical scholars, hopefully you can shed some light on a number of these questions and a number of these concerns related to the book of Revelation.